Hello everyone, my name is Jack Williams and I am the Prep Sports Beat Writer at the Tallahassee Democrat and this is episode 2 of the Big Ben Preps Midweek Madness Show, video show, whatever you want to call it. And it is finally week 1 of the regular season, preseason is in the books and all the games are going to count from here on out, so let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the impact that COVID-19 has had on area programs this week. I'm filming this on Tuesday, so I have no idea what might be happening on Wednesday when this goes up. I know it's only a day difference, but Tuesday brought forward a lot of news, just not in the Big Ben, but just in Florida in general. Tons of teams having to cancel games due to COVID-19 and positive tests. The two programs here being Leon and North Florida Christian. Now, Leon had to cancel its game against Rickards, which was supposed to happen August 27th at Gene Cox. That game has been canceled due to high COVID-19 cases at Leon and in their program. Um, their eligibility number right now is only at 14. Um, they didn't feel like that was the team they really wanted to compete with on the field, so that game has been canceled. Rickards, the other team, is currently looking for a new game on Friday. I talked to head coach Quinton Lewis earlier today. And he talked about how they still wanted to play the Leon game, but are looking for other options. Bartram Trail reached out to Rickards as well, but nothing is set in stone for the Raiders. The next team is North Florida Christian. All activities were suspended Monday due to COVID-19 exposure within the program. They didn't have anything set up this week. They did have a JV game against Taylor County, which has since been canceled, but they had an off week starting off here. So they weren't as significantly, significantly impacted on their schedule, but still an impact with COVID-19. As for outside the area, tons of teams around Florida, whether we're going south or east or west, Everyone really today on Tuesday was impacted by COVID-19. So once again, this is still a very serious threat to, you know, sports and just everyone in general, as we saw today on Tuesday. But enough with the bad news. Let's get into what is going on this week. That we're going to talk about here today is Childs, and they had an impressive preseason victory over South Walton on Friday. That was 51-34. and The offense was really going for the Timberwolves, and they really leaned heavy on that rush, dealing with the weather. Um, a lot of rain, according to Kevin Pettis, who is the head coach over at Childs, um, talking about their rushing game, uh, Jacquez Dickey had 180 rushing yards for them. Leading off that effort was Trey Jones with 198 rushing yards, and right behind those two was Ernie Tusani at 136. That was three triple-digit rushers for Childs in that game, showing that they might be a team that likes that rush a little more. However, head coach Pettis said that's something that they're not looking to lean on, maybe be a team that's a little more expansive with what they do. They rushed for over 500 yards as a team, and that really came down to the O-line, according to Coach Pettis, and just being able to open up holes. The big thing that they kind of took away from that week was that uh, they didn't come out of that game injury-free. There were a few injuries sustained in that game, but it did build momentum going into week one. They have a challenging game against Otega, Otauga. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Academy, who's an impressive team from Alabama that is coming down to play at Childs on Friday. That game is going to be at Childs High School. Um, it's going to be a challenge for the Timberwolves, but they're very much up to it. I think that uh, our line, that you know, they, we, for for the most part, we got a lot of work to do. But for the most part, they 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 were doing, you know, opening up holes. I think our backs were were hitting it hard. I think that, um, you know, I feel like uh, anytime we we I think we rush for 536 yards of offense and. You know, anytime you score, what we score, seven touchdowns and, and a field goal, I mean, you can't be. And we and we turned it over inside the 10 one time going into halftime. So, I mean, I mean, we had a chance to, to, to do some things. I thought that uh, we only threw the ball five times. And so I was able, I was happy with us being able to make adjustments when they started loading the box and bringing people. Our line stayed calm and kind of just picked it up. But that's part of having an old bunch in there. You know, they kind of seen it all before. So, I mean, I was very happy with that. I was not happy with giving up 34 points and gave up six deep balls. And so when you start playing teams like the team we're playing this week, and then we got Rickards the following week. And I mean, you start giving up long balls like that, then it, it could be, uh, you know, it, it could be it could be rough on them Timberwolves. I think it, it is just being true to who you are, just be, being who you are and what you are, not not getting caught up in the, um, you know, trying quarterbacks not being who they're not. I mean, you know, running backs not being who they're not, just being who we are, accepting that and, and going out there and just perfecting our craft and doing what we do every day and, and just making them better. Jack was Dickey, who was one of those top three rushers for the Timberwolves in that game. One of the top three rushers who put up triple digits 
in rushing yards. Said the biggest thing that was helping them last night was their O-line and being able to open up those holes to go into. And the biggest thing they said going into this game on Friday was improving their rushing game and continuing to improve the offense. They said they had a good performance, but it did take a while to get there as they felt like it didn't really pick up until the second quarter. Um, he says that improvement and just going at it is what's going to help Child, you know, have a successful game on Friday. Offense. Just keep doing what we do on offense. Pounding the ball, pounding the ball. They're going to get time. I'm the best feeling in the world. Home game, you know. I get to score some touchdowns in front of my school. It feels great. The next two teams we're going to talk about are actually going to be opponents on Friday. That is Florida High and Godby. That game is starting at 7.30 on Friday at Florida High. And they are two teams with really big expectations coming into this season. Florida High has been a constant in that 3A Final Four game, um, even making it to the championship game in 2019. And they believe they can take the extra step, extra two steps, whatever you want to call it, into being 3A state champions this year. You know, they have a great roster pushing that effort forward. And God be, um, you know, two classes up in 5A, but they have big expectations this year and just having a very heavy senior class, a lot of D1 talent so far. They have two Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt commits, one commit to South Carolina as well. They believe it's their year this year as well. They had an impressive showing down in Naples against Life Christian, um, just losing out in that game, um, and they believe they've grown from that. So without further ado, um, let's get into it. Sorry about Florida High. They had a really interesting showing last week against Thomas County Central, which acted as week one for them. Thomas County Central being a Georgia team, all those out-of-state games count as regular season games. Um, North Florida Christian was another one that had their first game of the week. Uh, anyway, all of you know that. Um, besides the point. Anyway, Drew Foru stepped up into a big starting quarterback role in that game. Trey Donaldson, the double commit to Auburn in football and basketball. He's kind of been the guy over at Florida High for them. However, he was out due to an injury, a minor injury that um, coaches just wanted to monitor and didn't want to inflame anymore. Anyway, Drew Foru really stepped up into that role. He threw for two touchdowns, rushed for one touchdown. He had 141 rushing yards. He had 127 passing yards. Great performance, you know, to break out of the shell. Coach Hickman really said that this is something we've seen all, all along. It wasn't really a surprise to him when he stepped up in the, into that role. They knew it was coming. Um, a lot of fans, a lot of media were very surprised by that, but they believed in Drew, you know, throughout camp. And, you know, he's going to play a big role in this team, and he might challenge that quarterback role as well. You know, try to improve one week better. You know, a lot of teams improve so much from their first week to their second week, you know, and certainly early in the season. Uh, and that's simply our biggest focus, you know, that we know we've got a very good uh, team coming in in Godby. Uh, you know, they played a very good opponent last week. So, uh, you know, for us, like I said, it's really just about correcting the mistakes that we made last week. And, and we certainly made our handful of them. So uh, we've got a lot to fix and try to just get one week better. Yeah, I think they did a good job. We also had some other guys that were out that have been in the program for a while, too, that uh, we ought to get back this week. So, no, we knew those guys would come in and do a very good job. You know, uh, I think Ryder's still learning a lot, uh, trying to figure some things out as he goes. But we've been able to watch Drew for a while now, and so we, we felt good that he was going to be able to come in uh, and not just uh, uh, be a good player, but be a very, very good player. So, you know, I think those guys did a great job. But, again, everybody's got stuff we can correct. Mm. I'll say forward, Ryder Popple is another player that kind of burst onto that scene of that game. He's a transfer from McClay. He – Outside of Faux Root was the next leading rusher with 46 yards. Didn't have any touchdowns, but, you know, a big breakout performance for, from the McClay transfer. Um, you know, a lot of good things happening for Florida High right now. Pieces are slowly coming together for Florida High, and I think that's what they want, and that's how they're going to challenge for that 3A title later on in the season. But right now they are focused on Godby, and that is a team that, you know, it's been week for week in just their focuses and stuff like that. They have a loaded schedule this year, and it's going to be an entertaining game. They know what they need to do, and they said they believe in themselves, and that's the key in order to find success in this game. Um, it's going to be a challenge for them. They have off. They have a stellar offense. If Donaldson comes back into that quarterback role, it's even more of a threat as well. Um, even if Fowler is in that role as well, he's just proved that he can do very similar things to Donaldson as well in the backfield and find success in the backfield. Either way, Florida High has a system equipped and they are ready for Godby when they come down uh, to Southeast Tallahassee. Yes, still new, trying to get the directions down. But um, when they come down to Southeast Tallahassee, you know, Florida High seems like they're very ready for this team. Uh, this week, just preparing, preparing for Godby, really. You know, we're just watching all the film. Uh, what are you expecting when God becomes here? They're going to be athletic and they're going to play hard. So 
So, you know, it's going to be a good game. So the next team that we're going to talk about here is Godby up in Northwest Tallahassee, making the diagonal trip down to Florida High. Anyway, they played Life Christian on Saturday last weekend in a preseason classic down in Naples. Um, they had a pretty sh strong showing for going up against a national opponent, Life Christian, a team from Virginia that is constantly playing national competition. It's a lot bigger than Godby as well. Um, was really challenged by the Cougars in that game. Um, they lost 22-16. to However, it was a really strong showing by the Cougars in that game. They were able to do a few things right in the fourth quarter to really make it competitive and give Godby a chance down the stretch. The biggest thing they took out of that game is they felt like they played smart in that fourth quarter and they need to continue that throughout the game. Also, a little control of emotions as well, as mentioned by Bryce Cowan, as we'll hear later on. But um, Coach McRae said that Florida High is a team that plays really smart football, and going into that game, they need to play smart football as well. Uh, really just, um, you know, we, we um, I feel like we, we fought with, I feel like we had a lot more energy than we brought in the spring. Uh, we got some guys back uh, throughout the summer and uh, really just uh, made it a point to, to practice harder and uh, to challenge the kids a little more, and I think they responded to it well. You know, really, you got a dynamic quarterback, and, um, you know, they got great players all over the place. And honestly, it's a proud program, and uh, what Coach Hickman has built over there and um, Coach uh, Julius over there, they, they've built something special at Florida High. And, um, so, you know, really just, you know, you you, you got to play smart, and you got to play physical when you play against them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned last week there's a handful of self-inflicted wounds that you guys are working on this week. Um, as mentioning, like you said, you know, playing smart against Florida High, is that one thing that you're really focused on this week, um, you know, just playing a little bit smarter? Yeah, um, we probably ran about 32 heels yesterday before we started practice. So uh, I think we got a, a good attitude adjustment, and I think the kids understand how serious it is to uh, go out and, and focus on us and not worry about talking and doing that, all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Similar to Coach McCray, Gobby players feel like they need to play a smart brand of football in order to be successful against Florida High, and they believe they can do that in sticking to their own identity. Um, they don't want to be inflicted by whatever is going on around them, what might affect them emotionally, you know, stick to the game that they know, and Bryce Cowan really echoed the sentiments as well. Um, they're prepared for whatever quarterback they might face, whether that be uh, Donaldson or Farouk. Um, they're prepared for whatever's going to be thrown at them because they believe that the system they have in place is good to combat whatever comes at them. And that really got pushed to the test against Life Christian. Uh, Bryce Cowan is the guy that's going to be leading this defensive effort. Um, he's a Vander Vanderbilt commit. Um, he's been strong on the defensive systems here. If we're talking about offense, Chase Gillespie and Kajon Banks, um, a Vanderbilt commit and a South Carolina commit, those are two that would be um, players to watch as well. Um, it's going to be a back and forth battle in this game. I'm not going to lie. Um, and my predictions, I had this down as one of the uh, win loss games for both teams. Um, mainly because both teams are just so talented, very close in classes. Uh, Godby's only two classes up from uh, Florida High. These are two teams that are really driven to success, really feel like they have um, a chance to do a lot here this season, have a lot of talent. It's going to be a game you don't want to miss. It's great that we're getting this early on this season. Uh, God be fans. It's only a, I did the drive today. It's only like a 20 minute drive from uh, your guys' area up in Northwest Tallahassee. Um, it's going to be a great game. Even if you aren't a God be or a Florida high fan, um, it's going to be a fun game to watch. You guys aren't going to want to miss this one for sure. Yeah. I mean, it ain't really much. We just got to play our responsibilities, play our coverage. It shouldn't be hard at all. Mm -hmm. You mentioned team play going into the game was a big thing that you guys took out of last game. Um, you know, how was the team play? You know, how was that really big for you guys? And what? How are you planning on taking that into next game? Um, we just knew that if we play as a team, then everything will go out good. But if we get too complacent, start breaking, start fussing at each other, then everything will come straight down here. But we just gotta stay together as a team, as a unit. You know, we played that that Virginia team. We felt confident as well, and I just know we're going. Right, this season is going to be a great season. And that's all that we have for today. Thank you, everyone, for watching me fumble through another episode of this show. But I hope you guys are enjoying it. If there's anything that you want me to see, anything you guys want me to go over, uh, anything that you just want to see from my writing or these videos, uh, just let me know. Send me a DM on Twitter. Send me an email. Um, and yes, yeah, subscribe to the Tallahassee Democrat. We cover preps extensively, not just football, but we do volleyball, cross country, golf, swim. Uh, you name it, we cover it. 
on all different planes as well. You know, we're doing videos, we're doing photos, and we're writing stories. So subscribe to Tallahassee Democrat, and I will see you guys on the field Friday.